I've been a missionary now for over 22 years, working in Kenya, East Africa. If you told me all those years ago when uh, I was a young man that I'd be working for the Lord in Africa, I would have said you'd have to be joking. But God has been good, God has been faithful, and we're seeing a lot of good things happen these days. My life verse is out of Proverbs chapter 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not under thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. I have allowed God to direct my path, because without God, without his direction and his power, without the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, nothing would happen. It's certainly not about Peter Morris, it's about the one that can do all things. And that's the one that we trust. Jesus Christ has blessed me with salvation and I've had the blessing of being able to take that message, that gospel message to others. I was brought up in Sydney, Australia, in the working class suburbs of Sydney. And uh, I went to a public school and had to work through all the difficulties of doing that. But eventually I found myself at Sydney University. I did economics, graduated in economics. And that was used by God to um, allow me to have a, a job in Denmark, which then assigned me to various projects in Ghana, in Nigeria. I was not to know that 20 years later, God would use that to bring me back into East Africa, Kenya, as a missionary. On my uh, return from working in Denmark and, and West Africa, I joined IBM and then had a number of other businesses that I'd started, but I, Ultimately ended up as a financial planner with a nice office overlooking Sydney Harbour with lawyers and accountants. And I got to the point where I wondered what was next. So I started getting involved in personal development seminars, which led into Eastern philosophies, which led into the New Age movement, where I got to do uh, all sorts of strange things like walking on hot coals, you know, breaking pieces of timber with your hand, and all those sorts of crazy things. Uh, but one thing I did know, and there was something that I was seeking for that I had not yet found. The church name is Lighthouse Baptist Church, Olorupa Lighthouse Baptist Church is in the area of Kilgoris. The church started 1994. So the church now have about 22 years. Yes, the same, same time I met Peter. Um, that is the time that uh, we started the church, but before, um, one year I received the Lord, 1993. And God wants each one of you to trust in Him with all your heart. He wants you to go beyond your understanding and He wants you to surrender and acknowledge that He is the one that's in control of your life. There is no better work on this planet, nothing closer to God's heart than leading somebody to Christ. Because that's the heart of missions. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of his death. Amen. Raised in the likeness of his Amen. resurrection. Amen. We're baptizing today, and we do that on a fairly frequent basis, but it's not without its difficulties. We've had to walk for uh, half an hour down a rocky path and a steep slope to get down to this creek. The creek has been backed up. It's about four foot deep. Um, you can't see the bottom, and we're about to uh, baptize a number of new new converts. Thomas Little was a journalist. I thought he was the most opinionated, arrogant person I'd ever met. As I was talking to him, he said that, um, you know, there's something going on in these seminars, but he said, it's not the answer. And I knew that to be true. But he returned from one of these meditation retreats and uh, two young ladies in his complex where he was uh, living were uh, saved and going to get baptized. He got invited to the baptism, heard the gospel, and then called the Baptist pastor to come around and explain it to him. And that's exactly what he did. And he asked the question, Pastor Piper, which he always asks, and that is, do you have any family or friends that need to hear the gospel, need to know that they can have their sins forgiven? Thomas pointed to me and said, we have a crazy friend down there, you might like to go and visit him. And he walked in, Pastor Piper, and I thought, what can this man do for me? And then he sat down and after five minutes of 
reading the scriptures to me, I thought, wow, he knows something that I don't know. And my life was about to change. I called on Christ and life did change. It was three years later that Pastor Piper stood up in the pulpit and said that he'd been communicating with some Kenyan pastors and that he needed a couple of men to go with him to Kenya. But I waited till he came down off the pulpit and I said, Pastor, if you think I'm spiritually strong enough, then I'll go to Kenya with you. And five minutes later, he's telling the church that I'm going to Africa with him. So I guess he thought I was spiritually strong enough. Here we are. At, uh, negotiating one more time. I suppose go negotiating again to go on uh, further into Maasai. So uh, I think we're about to leave and we're about to go and see one of these small Maasai churches out in the middle of nowhere. Amen. Amen. While we were in Kenya, we'd built some buildings and we'd run seminars, sometimes two or three thousand people. And we got up into the Kisi Highlands, the border of Maasai, and this young man tells me a story. He tells me about his poverty and about how his parents were killed and then later on how he had to sleep in a mud hut with half the roof missing. And he stopped and he said, look at me today, Peter. He says, I have shoes on my feet. I know he has a hole in one of his shoes. He said, I have clothes to wear. I only ever saw him wear one set of clothes. And he said, I have food to eat. He said, we have a good God. And that was when I bowed my head and I said, Lord, if you want me to help these people, I will. But explain to me, if I said to you, what is poverty? Can you explain that to me? Maybe the family, it doesn't have something to wear, mm -hmm. something to eat, and, uh, and mostly if they get something to eat, it is not balanced. And you can find the person or that family uh, physical appearance. Mm -hmm. You may find that uh, the the face is sunk or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you can find the the hair, just physical appearance, you mm -hmm. can find that this this family is living poverty. So at 42 years of age. I headed back to Bible college. I said to the Lord, if you want me to go back, you need to supply. Within one week, the Lord had put me in contact with an old friend from IBM, and I had a job back in the high paying IT industry. And within one year, I had enough money to go back to Bible college. Went back to Bible college, which was quite an adjustment for a 42 year old. And they all told me that I needed a wife if I wanted to go to the mission field. I said, Lord, if you want me to have a wife, I can only see 18, 19, 20 year olds here. This is not going to work. He's, I said, you need to supply. And sure enough, I walked down through administration and my wife, Melody, walked out and that was an answer to prayer. So here we are in uh, Mabari, which is uh, one of the suburbs of uh, Nairobi. Uh, not only do we deal with the uh, uh, rural areas like southwest Kenya and Bongoma and others, but rather um, this is in the city and uh, huge potential, huge density. There's just uh, so many souls to be won here. There are many more churches that could be planted here than are already here. The need, the need is great. And you say, how could God use me? You are just the one he wants to use. You are in a position where you have nothing to offer. Then God is in a position to offer everything. Yes. We were all ready to go in, nine, in 2001 to Kenya to live when I was diagnosed with terminal leukemia. I was given 18 months to live. And God changed our plans and I went back to Australia to have a bone marrow transplant. I worked with Pastor Mark Tossel at Lighthouse Baptist Church for seven years. 
He very kindly allowed me to work when I could and recover from the bone marrow transplant along the way. By 2009, God was calling me back to the US. That year I had uh, two detached retinas. Um, I'd already had two replaced lenses. But all, through all of this, God has blessed and I've been going back and forward to Kenya working with these national pastors consistently and seeing the work progress. Since coming to Kenya, we have had a, um, a hand in as many as 50 churches. We've worked with national pastors to start from scratch, uh, where we've planted the church. We've also had orphan pastors who really call themselves pastors, but have had very little training. And we work with them. You know, last time we had pastor schools, we had over 105 pastors and church workers across the country working with us. The uh, pastor schools really are to educate the pastor and bring him up to, to speed on, first of all, correct doctrine. And then we work with them in the areas of helping them build their church and talk about the fact of having to lead people to Christ, to disciple them, the correct music, those sorts of things. We um, also get involved in financially assisting some pastors while they get their feet off the ground. The pastors want to learn. Many don't understand that to build a church they need to go soul winning and discipling. And we have to educate them and illuminate them to that. Right throughout the ministry, God has brought the right people along at the right time. He's brought businessmen in Nairobi across my path, which become uh, advisors and mentors. He's also brought people along who have been uh, headmasters of schools and teachers, which have allowed us access to the schools. The schools are very open to have you come in and preach. Even yesterday, we were in a, a school. All these young students came around. We were able to go through the gospel with them and 61 put up their hand to get saved. A typical mud hut in Kisi border of Maasai would be mud floor, mud walls. The roof, if you're doing okay, would be tin or corrugated iron. Many have thatched roofs. They have small windows, wooden, wooden windows with shutters if they're doing okay. If not, they've just got a small window where they shove a rag in to stop the breeze coming through. Life is a little bit like a marathon. You have to have that attitude, um, otherwise you will get frustrated. Peter Monbrys is a true servant of God. He's a true missionary to our ministry, especially to us who are growing, who are new born babies in, in ministry. I don't know, or I can't imagine. If I do tell I don't have Peter Morris, I don't know where my ministry can be. One thing I just want to say, may God bless Peter Morris and really extend or expand his ministry in East Africa. I've been coming here on my own now for over 22 years and there are limitations on that and we're about to uh, bring a team into Kenya, East Africa. We call it Team East Africa because we believe that the multiplication effect of a team is going to expand the ministry beyond Kenya. So we will send out a team and they'll work with these people for a while and they'll return and we'll send out another team or multiple teams at a time. They'll train these pastors and train these new church members and that's how the ministry will grow as we look for mature men, uh, men of integrity who will go out and do likewise, plant churches, teach their people, help them to grow and then send out others. God has created both the African and those that live in the West. We have a responsibility to these people. We can't solve their every problem. We can't bring their world to the West and we can't take the West to them. But we can help and we should help. We need to take the gospel to them at a minimum and then help them with some of their daily needs. We need to understand how greatly blessed we are. And with that, maybe there's hope that we would be a blessing to them. 
And one day, we may be sending preachers, evangelists, missionaries out of Africa back to the West where we seem to have lost track and lost perspective. I am a missionary, my name is Peter Morris, and there's still much to be done.